Hello and welcome. You're watching Arts TV Weekly News Review with me, Pete Nash. Each week I will be bringing you the major news items from across Ethiopia and the region. The Ethiopian Customs Commission announced goods worth over 30 million burr were apprehended in a one-week operation conducted by a number of collaborating stakeholders. Contraband items seized whilst being smuggled out of the country included foreign banknotes, hashish and coffee. Items being smuggled into the country included clothing, electronics, vehicle spare parts, cigarettes and various weapons with a value of over 25 million burr. The coordinated multi-sectorial task force operation involved targeted searches, aerial surveillance and surprise checkpoints. As a result, 21 vehicles were apprehended and those involved with the smuggling have had their cases sent to court. The Commission said illegal transportation of goods seriously harms the economy, social safety and peace. It therefore calls on the public to continue cooperating with the Commission and to prevent and eliminate contraband practices. In a joint statement, scholars in the Ethiopian diaspora said now is not the time for focusing on our differences. Rather, they say it is time to look deeply into the dangers our country is facing in terms of internal conflict and foreign aggression. The Ethiopian scholars residing in North America, Europe, Australia and other parts of Africa said there are enemies out there who rejoice when racist and extremist elements in our country oppress and murder their fellow countrymen. They warned against those who instigate civil strife and work towards the disintegration of our country. The joint communique indicated that the current government had inherited a country plagued by severe social and political challenges. It added, however, that they cannot entirely escape blame for the recent massive loss of lives. The diaspora hoped that those who caused the murder and suffering of innocent civilians should be swiftly brought to justice. Finally, they called upon all Ethiopians to stand together for a peaceful and united country. This week, a press conference from the office of the Prime Minister pointed to the COVID pandemic, desert locust infestations and ongoing security operations as the three major barriers to macroeconomic growth in Ethiopia. However, in spite of these and other problems, the foreign exchange earnings reached $2 billion in the 10th month of the budget year. The National Committee noted that compared to the same period last year, foreign exchange earnings showed a 17% increase. The committee said Ethiopia has performed well in comparison to average global economic growth. It acknowledged, however, the rising cost of living, which poses serious financial problems to, the, to some sections of the population. They urged the public to work side by side with the government to strengthen the economy and correct the shortcomings. Ethiopia's most eminent clergy all gave messages of best wishes last weekend as the population celebrated Ethiopian Easter. In his Easter message, the patriarch of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, Abune Matthias, said the faithful should celebrate the holiday by thinking about Ethiopia's displaced and suffering people. He encouraged support for them in finding food, clothing and other assistance. Cardinal of the Ethiopian Catholic Church, Brahan Jesus Surafel, said that the holidays should be about remembering forgotten ones and extending a helping hand to those in need. He also stressed the importance of observing strict COVID protocols at the holiday gatherings. General Secretary of the Ethiopian Gospel Believers Church Council, Reverend Derije Demburu, remarked that the faithful should live their lives in accordance with the scriptures given by the Creator and through mutual respect, love and peace. Melez Alam, Ethiopia's ambassador to Kenya, has held talks with the Kenyan Foreign Minister Rachel Amomo. During the discussions, Ambassador Melez updated the Foreign Minister on the country's most pressing issues. These include the current situation in Tigray, the negotiations on Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, the Ethiopian Sudan border situation and the upcoming national elections. On her part, the Kenyan Foreign Minister expressed her belief that the issues of the dam and Ethiopia Sudan border can be resolved peacefully and done so through the principle of African solutions for African problems. She also said she believes Ethiopia will successfully accomplish the upcoming national elections and expressed her country's desire to further strengthen the long years of friendship with Ethiopia. 
In a message conveyed over the Easter weekend from the Minister of Health, Dr Leia Tedesi, she called for strict adherence to COVID prevention protocols in places like public transport, churches, mosques and marketplaces. She pointed out that the pandemic is posing severe health risks across Ethiopia and furthermore is now seriously affecting wider social and economic challenges. She stressed the need for properly observed prevention methods, especially during the current holiday season. In a related development, the minister reported that as of last Tuesday, over one million Ethiopians had taken their first COVID vaccine, protecting them against the virus. She encouraged all those who are eligible to take the vaccine soon. She also expressed her gratitude to the frontline healthcare professionals who are doing all they can to protect the nation from the virus. A feeding centre that will serve meals for 1,000 low to no income citizens has started operation at the Arada subcity of the capital. The centre provides nutritious food collected from large hotels operating in the area. Participating hotels have committed to donate spare food from their restaurants. The centre was inaugurated by the Deputy Mayor of the City of Addis Ababa, Mrs. Adanach Ababe. She said, there are several thousand people in the city who cannot afford to eat even once a day and that free food centres such as these would contribute greatly to their nutritional needs. She said there are plans to establish similar centres in other parts of the city in cooperation with other local hoteliers. The Speaker of the House of Rep People's Representatives in Ethiopia, Tagese Chafu, has held discussions with African Union election observers about the preparations for next month's sixth general election in Ethiopia. Mr. Chafo said various reform activities, including amendments to the electoral law, have been carried out to help the election progress peacefully. The meeting with the AU occurred just days after the European Union scrapped plans to send their own observers. In response to this decision, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ethiopia said, it is very unfortunate to learn that the issue of communications equipment was put forth as a deal breaker for the EU. He added, the demand has come as a surprise to the Ethiopian government, as none of these elements was a bone of contention in the past elections. At the end of the African Union session, Mr. Tegese said the AU observers have received enough information to ensure that the election is free, fair and credible. He went on to say the government of Ethiopia has attached special attention to increase the participation of women in the election. He encourages as many women as possible to take advantage of the extended registration period and to head to the polling stations next month. This brings us to the end of this week's weekly news review on Arts TV. I've been Pete Nash. Thanks for watching and catch you next time.